All right, the next series of um, armory assets are the Steel Rain, Citadel Shield, Orbital Strike, and Colossus Heavy Tank. These are reserved for Hive Lords and above. So unfortunately, um, we may not get to see a, well live demonstrations about it, but I'll explain them um, for those who are either looking for higher rank or want to know the theory behind it. A Steel Rain is basically a 12-person drop pod assault. So what it does is that you place it on a specific point on the map and um, it will begin a 30 second countdown. Um, anyone not in the vehicle will be automatically redeployed immediately um, above that point where you place the steel rain. It's very obvious there will a gigantic um, storm cloud with your faction's color will be um, will basically appear above the drop point. And basically think of it as yeah, a squad wide um, drop pod assault. Um, it is very often used... Actually, can I... Do we have the resources to do these shenanigans? I think we do, so I will demonstrate. Uh, unfortunately... Let me just move... Ooh, okay. I can, we've only got one in the armory, so I'll just use alphas as an example. But if I drop a steel rain on top of C-point building... And immediately craft it... So, oh no, I've got two. Um, Bravo Squad, if you want to, feel free to drop a Steel Rain above C point on. We've got enough blue and they have 15 each, so a demonstration is in order. But everyone in Alpha Squad should have seen that timer. Um, squad members not in vehicle will redeploy into drop pods in X seconds. And in 10 seconds, we'll see what the Steel Rain does. Ah, uh, yes. Cool. Uh, hold on. Just got redeployed. That's a max crash. And then, it's very often used just to drop um, 12 maxes, because maxes will actually, maxes can actually deploy in these drop pods. So steel brains are very often used to um, to deploy just 12 maxes directly onto a point. Um, as you can see, there is a symbol on the, on the map, and this is visible to both friendly and enemy forces, those three chevrons, the three chevrons and lines. This denotes a, um, a steel rain. And you can see, if you look up into the sky, you can actually see you know, a storm cloud with a purple tint, a purple glow. Um, so you can very easily detect NC ones by the blue color and the TR ones by the red. Yeah, when when you see this storm cloud, you better, and it's not purple, you better get ready. A whole bunch of nasties about to drop in your head. As I said, these work with maxes, and the primary use for this is basically, you know, two minutes left in an alert, you need to defend, you know, you need to defend the base, but you're cut off. Galaxies aren't fast enough to um, drop to drop maxes earlier, so you pop a steel rain and get 12 maxes, everyone runs to the point, you know, you save the day, you're a big hero, hurrah, hurrah. Um, you can also use them to leapfrog ahead of, um, you can also use them to leapfrog ahead of attacking forces, but honestly, that's, that's not as big of a usage. It, its main usage is a 12-person max crash, basically. And they are quite shockingly effective, but quite easy to, well, quite easy to um, see coming. You know, it takes 30 seconds and you see a, a symbol and a gigantic pub, um, gigantic purple cloud. So plan ahead when you... Okay, that's the Steel Rain. Um, the next asset is the Citadel Shield. It is fairly simplistic. It is basically a 75 meter, um, 75 meter radius wide double shield. And in order to, so it's a two-way barrier. It will stop projectiles. Actually, I'll drop one. Should I drop one? I kind of want to drop it on a tower map so I can see it. Santa's the. All right, let's do it this way. Um, I'll just drop it here, just because um, everyone's here already. 
and I'm going to drop the Citadel Shield outside of spawn. So this is not a good use of this is not a good use normally for a Citadel Shield, but I think the visual is important here. So you'll see the sort of blue dot um, arriving, and over spawn is the Citadel Shield. It is a 75 meter, I think 75 meter wide um, two-way shield. So if you're on the inside, you cannot shoot out, and if you're on the outside, you cannot shoot in. You should see a structure on top of the shield. Um, you see that little sort of star-shaped structure on the very top? That can actually be destroyed. Um, so any friend, can friendly forces damage it? I don't know. These don't actually destroy it if you're getting... But enemy fire can destroy that. Um, anything, I think, anything capable of damaging armor. So rocket launchers, rocket rifles, sea tank cannon, and um, air can take down citadel shields. So these are often used as portable cover um, because the citadel shield is up. Um, you can move up and then you know worm your way past it. So the, um, so yeah, these are often used as portable cover. Basically, you know, you drop an, a citadel shield, you tell everybody in your platoon to push up to the edge of the citadel shield and then push through. But bear in mind, in this use, it can just as well be used for the enemy to push up. So you have to be pretty careful where you use um, citadel shields. Other use is area denial. So say, you know, you've got, um, this is often the case in tower maps. So places like um, the tower on the ascent or at on the bastion. Um, if you drop a citadel shield on top of the tower, um, it's a two-way shield, so anyone inside the tower suddenly can't shoot out, and you know, you can camp armor around the shield, make sure nobody gets out. So these can be a bit tricky to use, but they are really, really effective. Um, the most common use case is honestly around tower maps, where um, you know you're attacking a tower map, your armor is getting torn to shreds because of heavies and turrets from the tower battlements. And so you put a citadel shield around the tower, and they can't shoot out, and you're more safe than before. It doesn't look like it takes friendly fire, by the way. That's, okay, that's good. So yeah, it doesn't take friendly fire. At the same time, you can fuck yourself up by deploying this. Yes, you can. Um, bear in mind, the enemy, if they're on the inside or the outside, can also take cover behind the shield. It is a two-way shield. It used to be one way. Um, if you're on the inside, you used to be able to shoot out. Um, they did change that because too many people come. So okay. now, okay. now it is an impermeable barrier. Um, are there any questions about the steel rain or citadel shield? There are none. I shall um, I shall progress to the big one and probably the main reason why everyone is here: the orbital strike, the big fuck off death laser from the sky. Ah, uh, do I want to drop an orbital? Just <laughs> yes, you do. All right, I'm not going to drop it directly on top of our heads because that would be cruel. Um, actually, fuck. Ah, uh, yes, so that is an orbital. I run where you can. Uh. Kaboom. You did it. I think I, I think my whole team. Anyway, you can see um, two circles. The uh, main one is basically where the... Uh, how, do I, how do I put this? It's basically a gigantic kill circle. Um, there are two... You can think of it as basically two zones, so anything inside the big yellow circle where the orbital strike was, anything um, that's not under... Oh, it's so hard to explain. Anyone in the bigger circle will immediately die, um, unless they are undercover, so inside buildings. Basically anywhere you can't place a beacon. So if you're undercover somehow, like under a rock or inside a building, and you're inside the yellow circle, you won't die. Unless you are a max, a maxes will die anywhere in the in the big circle. Inside that circle, there's actually a smaller um, circle with the crosshairs around it where the actual laser hits, 
anyone in that laser will basically die regardless of who they So big circle, everybody um, undercover except Maxes because we'll die, Maxes will die regardless. And inside the inner circle, everybody dies. Um, for a certain radius outside the circle, you will be flung by the laser. And often the physic often you get flung um, far enough and hard enough for the impact to kill you unless you're a light assault or you have the safe four implant. So what are orbital strikes used for? Typically Yeah. Yes, as Horace mentioned, OSs are primarily max crash killers. You hold up in a point. Typically, you'll be you want to be inside a point. So say you know everybody run into C point. Everybody uh, run into C point. You know you take the point, hold it. Um, there's like ten NC, like ten NC maxes barging at your front door. You drop an orbital on top of your building and all of the NC Maxes die and everyone outside the building dies but then you know, you're safe inside the building except for your Maxes, your medics have to um, revive your Maxes but yeah, OSs are typically used as um, Max Crash Killers they can also be used um, to kill um, enemy base structures although this is not as commonly used because um, the sky shield has to be down in order to actually hurt bases. Incidentally, there are actually two kinds of OSs. Um, there's a OS you can build um, with the player-made bases using the ant. It is a fairly heavy investment, and that's construction, so we won't really delve on that. But just bear in mind, you can actually build an OS. And then there's the armory OSs, which um, which we demonstrated just there. The OSs are deployed the same way steel reins and citadel shields are. You right click on your map or on your mini map and you deploy um, the war assets menu. Alright, that was the orbital strike. Um, any questions regarding that? If you have any um, questions, I'll, there will be a big Q&A session at the end, but um, while the information is still fresh, um, feel free to ask any questions that come to mind. It can be about when to use them or when not to use them as well. Just uh, the can max. You, can you repeat what does the, the smaller circle do? The smaller circle is basically where the laser, um, visually where the laser is. It will kill anything in its... Um, in its range. It will kill anything in its radius. It's just a tiny circle inside the main OS circle. Even but under the cover? Yep, even under cover. The laser will obliterate all. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So if um, if an enemy OS targets you, get um, get indoors, get under cover somehow. You will be thrown by the blast radius. If you're a max, um, if you can get outside the circle and, un and under cover, do so. If not, hug a medic and um, pray they know enough to use their medic tool on you. I actually have a question though. Um, you know, there's a big circle, the, the outer circle. Sometimes when you're outside the range, you still get blown up, right? Uh, yes, that's most, you'll mostly die to physics because it will throw you away from the epicenter. So from the center of the blast, they, you will get thrown into the air. In this and often, range, is your max, will this kill you or just throw you away? Uh, often the drop, if you're, cl it, the, the actual distance you get thrown decreases as you uh, move away from the, so the further you are away, the less you get thrown. If you're very close to the edge of the circle, you will probably get thrown uh, far enough and hard enough to kill you. In that case, the drop damage will, unless you have safe fall or a light assault. Okay, so it's um, it, it will throw away if you're a max, you're yeah. you will get blown up, but you yeah. won't die instantly. Yeah, the blast itself won't kill you. The physics will afterward. Okay, thank you. Um, same with any infantry, really, unless you're a light assault. There's a way to use the orbital strike when you're a max, uh, especially when you're an NS, NS max. Uh, you go max rank safe fall. And you can just use the orbital strike as a, well, sliding tool. Admittedly, um, SKLs, well, 
it can help um, and scale as policy on armory usage because we have a fair few leads um, we well, try no, to I mean, we don't use it to do that I mean if there's an overstrike you can get away with it with safe fall is what I'm saying ah uh, yeah that's a good point uh, safe fall if you're outside the circle would generally um, guarantee your safety unless you're thrown off a cliff because I think the fatal distance for safe fall is something like 200 meters yeah, near 230 meters. Um, any other questions regarding the OS? Ah, oh, yeah, one way to use an OS is actually preceding a max crash of your own. So if you're at spawn and you know you see, you know, you um, people call out, you know, their 10 NC maxes and 10 scat maxes inside inside C point, you can chuck an orbital strike at C point. Generally, you want to get as close as you can um, without actually succumbing to the blast or the physics itself. You know, once you hit the once the OS strikes, you push in quickly and try to take the point. Um, this applies to um, galaxy drops and armor pushes as well. You can use um, OSs as well to scatter armor columns. Um, generally, unless they were coordinated, they generally will scatter in all directions, which allows you to push in with your own armor. But it is generally quite unreliable, just because, well, armor can move out of the circle quite easily. Also, bear in mind that a deployed um, deployed shield Sunday will um, will survive a direct orbital blast. So I'll actually pull one, just to make an example. Um, can everyone meet around between waypoint at the at the um, vehicle term? And I can't deploy it here, but this thing with the module on top, I'll actually deploy it further down the road, um, but you should be able to see it from... But these things will actually survive a direct hit. Once it deploys, come on, there we go. These things will survive a direct hit from an orbital strike. So just bear that in mind if you're using them to clear out spawns. Um, you often need to move in with your own inventory to finish the job with rockets or C4, whatever you've got in hand. Alright, the last asset is the Colossus tank, and that's actually one we can experiment with freely. Um, if everyone goes into VR training, I can explain more about the Colossus there. So press keyboards, um, redeploy to VR training. Or not, if you just want to listen, that's okay. But the cool thing about Colossus tanks is that you don't need to deploy them. You can experiment with them freely in um, in the VR training facility. So if you go to just oh, if you go to Alpha Waypoint, there's a terminal here where you can spawn Colossus tanks. So these are the only terminals that can spawn. Actually, I wait for everyone to gather up. So give it maybe about a minute more and then I'll explain what the Colossus tank is and what it does. I can see everyone having fun with them already. Yes, they are cool. I did build like a little orbital base where we were at Crux. If someone, if you guys want to try it out. Reloading. Orbital strike. Alrighty, this is the Colossus Tank Terminal. You will see them at warp gates and tech plants, and that is it. So you can only spawn them at those two types of bases. Um, if you interact with it, it's basically like any other vehicle terminal. Um, normally, it actually costs, well, an, a, a Colossus in the armory, but we don't have any. So in VR training, you can experiment with them for free, and it is basically a super heavy tank. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail about um, its tactical usage because that's probably more of an armor thing, but it is a five-person tank um, containing one hella big gun and four turrets. If, um, if you press the deploy button, by default it is B. You activate what is you activate a bubble shield around you and you gain access to the Skylands cannon which is basically a railgun that can kill air. 
and bastion hardpoints. The two main roles of a Colossus are basically as a super heavy tank, um, covering repair sundies and other vehicles with a shield, and as a bastion killer. So while in Skylands mode, Bastion hardpoints will actually be highlighted and you can fire and destroy those hardpoints even through the Bastion itself. Um, there is a third niche usage if you have the AMS module on the, Bast on the um, Colossus, but that's not as well known. But yeah, two main uses as the center of an armor column and as Bastion hunters. Um, again, you can experiment freely with it in VR training. So, if you want to, uh, if you want to, Trim, who, who do you think would win this tug of war, really? <laughs> but yeah, very big, very slow, hurts a shit ton. Um, generally, a threat to bastions and armor columns. Um, does anyone have any questions about the Colossus tank? Bear in mind, I don't know too much about their doctrine, um, th their actual use. Um, what I'm telling you is basically the basics, but that should, but that and a few um, VR training things should hopefully get you started. Uh, Squiffles, did you have a question? Source. No, I accidentally pressed the button. Okay. Uh, uh, I have a question. Um, Go on. How do I get promoted to use these benefits? Uh, that's actually a pretty good question. Um, leading in game, um, community, so being active on the Discord, and a bunch of other things that I can't quite recall off the top of my head. But yeah, generally being an active, yeah, it's a it's an evolved process. Um, Generally, leading in game will get you noticed by the um, OA or the Officers Academy, um, and you mostly get ranked through there. Wait, can you say that last part again? Uh, last part. Yeah. So leading in game, being an active community member, basically. Um, bear in mind, only Hive Lords and above get access to the Colossus tank, and it's mostly an armor asset. So, we don't use many of them, admittedly. Uh, were there any, was there anything you wanted me to clarify? Um, if I want to get promoted, right, who do I talk to? Uh, actually, Horace, um, probably be the best person to talk to at the moment. Um, he's Bravo lead at the moment, so feel free to hit, um, hit him up with a DM or a message once we're done here. Got it. Press C and talk to him. Uh, yeah, um, as I said, you know, Colossus tanks are free to use in VR training, so go wild. Probably one of the more important things to know with a Colossus is that they don't take, um, if you're going to be rolling with a Colossus, it is important not to get in its way, because it, it it will deal a lot of um, of ram damage to whatever it hits, whether that be friend or foe. As you can see, if you were watching me, I just bumped into a harasser and blew it up. It will basically damage anything by ramming into it. Um, it's coded that way, so you can't really get around it. But yeah, um, if there are no other questions, games, I... Honestly, do we even have fuel in, on our axis? I feel like it's all nanites at this point. Fuel nanites. <laughs>